bird song in the hills bird watching is more difficult in the hills than on the plains many birds are difficult to to spot against the dark green of the trees or the varying shades of the hillsides large gardens and open fields make bird watching much easier on the plains but up there in the mountains one has to be quick of eye to spot a fly catcher flitting from tree to tree or a mottled brown tree creepers ascending the trunk of oak or spruce but few words remain silent one learns of their presence from their calls or songs bird song is with you wherever you go in the hills from the foothills to the tree line it is often easier to recognize the bird from its voice than from its colorful but brief appearance the barbet is one of those birds which are heard more than they are seen summer visitors to our hill stations must have heard their monotonous far reaching call po po or anio anio they would pro- probably not have seen the birds as they keep to the tops of high trees where they are not easily distinguished from the foliage apart from that the sound carries for about half a mile and as the bird has the hab- habit of turning its head from side to side while calling it is very difficult to know in which di- direction to look for for it bob barbets love listening to their own voices often two or three birds answer each other from different trees each trying to undo the other in a shrill sh- shouting match most birds are noisy during the mating season barbets are no noisy all year round some people like the barbets call and consider it both striking and pleasant some don't like it and simply consider it striking in parts of garhwal himalayas there is a legend that the bird is the reincarnation of a money lender who died of grief at the unjust termination of of a lawsuit it eternally his plant rises to heaven a new a new which means injustice injustice Bar- barbets are found throughout the tro- tropical world but pro- probably the fa- fa- finest of these birds a- is the great himalayan barbet but just over a foot in length it has a massive yellow bill almost as large as that of a toucan the head and neck are a rich violet the upper back is olive brown with pale green streaks the wings are green washed with blue brown and yellow in spite of all the brilliant colors the barbet is not easily distinguished from its leafy surroundings it goes for the highest tree tops and seldom comes down to earth hodson's gray-headed flycatcher bar wobbler is the long name that ornithologists in the infinite wisdom have given to a very small bird this tiny bird is heard if not seen often more often than any other bird throughout the western himalayas it is almost impossible to visit any hill station between nainital and dalhousie we without noticing this warbler its voice is heard in every second tree and yet there are few who can say what what it looks like its song if if you can call it that is not very musical 
and Douglas Dewar in writing about it was reminded of a notice that once appeared in a third-rate music hall. The audience is respectfully requested not to throw things in um, at the p pianist. He is do doing the best. His, our little, little warbler does his best, incessantly emitting four or four, five unmusical but joyful and pen penetrating notes. He is much smaller than a sparrow, being only some four inches in length, of which one third consists of tail. His low lower plumage is bright yellow, his upper parts all olive green, the head and neck are grey, the head being set off by cream colored eyebrow. He is an active little bird, always on the move, both he and his mate and so sometimes a few friends hop about from leaf to leaf looking for insects both large and small and uh, the way he puts away an inch long, long caterpillar would please the most accomplished spaghetti eater and another tiny bird heard more often than it's seen in the green backed tit a small little bird about the size of a sparrow. It constantly utters a sharp rather other metallic but not unpleasant call which sounds like kiss me, kiss me, kiss me. And another far fine singer is the sunbird which is found in Kumayan and Gagagarwal. But perhaps the far finest songster is a grey winged uh, owl. Throughout the early summer, he makes the wooden hillsides ring with his black like black bird like mammal melody. The hill people call this bird the Kastura or K -K Kasturi, a name also applied to the Himalayan whistling thrush. But the whistling thrush has a yellow bill, whereas the owl is red red billed and is much the sweet, sweetest singer. Now night jars for or goat suckers to give them their ancient name are birds that lie concealed during the day in shady woods, coming out at dusk on silent wings to hunt for insects. The night jar has a huge frog-like mouth, but is best recognized by its long tail and wings and its curiously silent flight. After dusk and just before dawn, you can hear its curious call, tong 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 tong, a note like like that produced by striking a plank with a hammer. As we pass from the plains to the hills, the traveler is transported from one bird realm to another. Rajput is separated from Mussoorie by a far five mile footpath and within that brief distance we find the core of the house crow replaced by deeper note of the corby instead of the crescendo shriek of the quail. The dub double note of the kakaku meets the ear for the eternal cooing of the li li little brown dove the melodious cocoa green pigeon is substituted. The harsh cries of the rose ring parakeets give place to the softer call of the slate headed species. The dissonant voices of the seven sisters no longer issue for, for, from the bushes. Their place is taken by the weird but more, more, more pleasing calls of the Him Himalayan strict laugh, laughing thrushes. When I first came to live in the hills, it was the song of the Himalayan whistling thrush that caught my attention. I did not see the bird that day. It kept to do the deep shadows of the ravine below the old stone cottage the following day. I was sitting at my window, gazing out at the new leaves of the walnut and wild pear trees. All was still. The wind was at peace with itself. 
The mountains brooded massively over the darkening sky, and then, uh, emerging from the depths of the sunless chasm, like a dark, sweet secret, came the in indescribably beautiful call of the whistling thrush. It is a song that never fails to thrill and enchant me. The birds. Starts with with a his hesitant schoolboy whistle as though tra trying out the rune tune, then confident of a mammal melody, it bursts into full song, a crescendo of sweet notes and variations that ring clearly across the hillside. Suddenly, the song breaks off right in the middle of of a cadenza, and I am left wondering what happened to make the bird stop so suddenly. At first, the bird was heard but never seen. Then one day, I found the uh, whistling thrush perched on the broken garden fence. He was deep listening purple, uh, his shoulders flecked with white, he had steady black legs and a strong yellow beak. A dapper fellow would have looked just right to in, in a tof tofat. When he saw me coming down the path, he uttered a sharp cree. Uh, a expect an un unexpectedly harsh when compared to, to to his singing and flew off into the shadowed ravine as the months passed he grew used to my pre presence and became less shy once the rainwater pipes were blocked and this resulted in an overflow of water and a small permanent puddle or under the serps and under the steps this became the whistling thrush's favorite bathing place on sul sultry summer afternoons. While I was taking a siesta upstairs, I would hear uh, the bird flapping about in the rainwater pool. A little later, refreshed and sun stunning himself on the roof, he would treat me to, to a li little co concert. Performed, I could not help feeling, especially for my, my benefit. It was Go Govin the milkman who told me the legend of the whistling thrush, locally called Kastura by the hill people, and oh, but also Go going by, by the name of uh, Kishan Papati. According to the story, Lord Krishna fell asleep near a mountain stream, and while he slept, a small boy made made off with the god's famous flute. Upon walking and finding his flute gone, Krishna was so angry that he changed the culprit into a bird. But have having once played on the flute, the bird had learned bits and pieces of Krishna's wonderful music, and so he continued in his disrespectful way to pay the, play the music of the gods, once stopping now and then, as the whistling thrush does when he couldn't remember the tune. It was long before it wasn't long before my whistling thrush was jotted by a female who looked exactly like him. I am sure there are such subtle points of difference, but not to my ma myopic eyes. Sometimes they gave so solo performances, sometimes they sang duets, and these no no doubt were. love calls because it wasn't long before the pair were make, making four forays into the rock rocky ledges of the ravine looking for a, or a suitable maternity home but a few breeding seasons were to pass before i saw any of their young almost uh, after almost three years in the hills i came to do the conclusion that these were birds for, for all seasons. They were li liveliest in midsummer, but even in the depths of winter, with slow li li lying on the ground, 
they would suddenly start singing as they flitted from pine to oak to naked chestnut. As I write, they, there is a strong wind rushing through the trees and birds sling about in the chimney while distant thunder threatens a storm. Undismayed, the whistling thrushes are calling to each other as they roam the wind-threshed forest. Whistling thrushes uh, usually rest on raw rocky ledges near water, but uh, my, my overtures of friendship may have my, my visitors other ideas. Recently, I was away from Mus Musori for ab about a fortnight. When I returned, I was about to open the window when, when, when I noticed a large bundle of ferns, lichens, grass and moss ba balanced outside on the window ledge. Peering through the glass, I was able to recognize this untidy bundle as a nest. It is. It meant, of course, that I couldn't open the window and this would have resulted in the nest trot toppling over the edge. Fortunately, the room had another window and I kept this one open to let it sunshine, fresh air, the music of birds and always welcome the call of the postman. The postman's call may, may not be as musical as bird song, but this writer never ever tires of it, for it heralds the arrival of the occasional check that makes it possible for him to live close to nature. And now, this very day, three pink freckled eggs lie in the cup of moss that forms the nursery in this jumble of a nest. The parent birds, both male and female, come and go, bustling about very efficiently, fully prepared for, for a great day that's gonna come coming soon. The wild cherry tree, which I grew especially for birds, attracts a great many, many small birds, both when it, it is in flower and when it is in fruit. When it is covered with pale pink blossoms, the white common visitor is a little yellow-backed sunbird, which emits a squeaky little song as he fits from a branch to branch. He extracts the nectar from the blossoms with his tubular tongue, uh, sometimes while ho ho hovering on the wing. Uh, and uh, but you usually while clingly clinging to do the sl sl slender twigs J just as some ve ve vegetarians will occasionally condescend to eat meat the sunbird like the bob barbet will vary his di diet with insects small caterpillars spiders beetles bugs and flies probably in most cases themselves Vivis visitors to these flowers fall prey to do these birds. I have also seen a sunbird flying up and catching insects on the wing. The fly flycatchers are gorgeous birds, especially the paradise flycatcher with its long white tail and go go ghost like flight. And although they are largely insectivorous, like some meat eaters, they will also take a little fruit and so they will occasionally visit the cherry tree with its sour little cherries ripening while traveling over the boughs the utter twittering notes will the occasional louder calls and now and then the male bird breaks out into a sweet little song just uh, justifying the name of Shah Bulbul by which he is known in northern India.